Good morning boys and girls, I hope you're all well. I hope you've had a lovely weekend and you're ready for a new week of guided reading. This week we are going to be looking at a new book but first let's remind ourselves of our reading strategies. You can use any of these strategies to help you with your reading but the ones I want you to focus on are your eagle eye which is when you look at your pictures in the book to help you with words and your stretchy snake. Your stretchy snake is when you look at the letters in a word and you stretch the sounds out slowly and you go back and say the sounds all together. Let's have a go at a stretchy snake of our own. Stinky. St. In. K. E. Good job. Well done. Let's have a go. All together one more time. Stinky. St. In. K. E. Well done. Good job. The book we're going to be looking at this week is called Stinky Street. Boys and girls, here is what our book looks like on Oxford Owl. Let's have a read. Stinky Street. Chapter 1. Franklin has a problem. Houses are very different. Some are huge and have gold swimming pools. Pop stars live in those. Some are in rows with a brick wall at one end and overlook a pie factory. Franklin Gates lives in one of those. Number three, Stanley Street to be exact. Some people might think, I want a house with a swimming pool, but not Franklin. He loves living on Stanley Street. Everyone was friendly. All his mates were there and the smells from the pie factory. Mmm, delicious. There was just one problem. Franklin's mum and dad wanted to move. His mum was expecting twins and they needed another bedroom. I don't mind sharing mine, Franklin said. Babies cry all night. I'll wear earplugs. But his parents wouldn't listen. This house is too small, said his mum. The next day there was a for sale sign stuck by Franklin's door. Franklin and his best friend Josh stared at the words of doom. What am I going to do, Josh? said Franklin. Josh frowned. Has your house got problems? Number 40's got problems and no one wants to buy it. Franklin stared at number 40. It looked all right to him. What kind of problems? he asked. Oh, mice and damp and really horrible wallpaper. Franklin sighed. His house was warm and friendly and it had just been painted. Worse luck. Mrs Cox lived next door to Franklin in a little house that he had once been the corner shop. Just then she came out. Hello lads, will you take? Before she could finish, her dog Zack leaped out of her house. He jumped up at the boys trying to lick their faces. Yuck! Down, Zack! Josh, Josh giggled. Mrs Cox told Zack to get down. He hasn't been out all day. I've been a bit wobbly, she said, tapping her legs. No worries, Franklin smiled. He didn't mind taking Zack anyway. He loved him to bits. I'm sorry you're moving, Mrs Cox said. So am I, Franklin grumbled. Mrs Cox patted Franklin on the arm. Never mind, your house might take months to sell. For a week, it looked like, it looked as if Mrs Cox was right. Only a few people came to the, look at the house and none of them wanted to buy it. Franklin's mum stroked her growing tummy and looked fed up. Upstairs, Franklin danced around with his underpants on his head in celebration. Maybe he was safe. Maybe no one would buy his house. But a few days later, it must have been Thursday, because the smell from the pie factory were chicken and rhubarb. Franklin came home from school to find a man in the kitchen. His name was Mr Bragg and was interested in buying the house. Mr Bragg wasn't interested in Franklin. He glared at Franklin and trod on his toes without saying sorry. Franklin's heart sank when Mr Bragg said he wanted to come back for a second visit. Saturday morning, ten o'clock sharp, he said. Two. 
Franklin makes a plan. That night, Franklin had a bad dream. Mr. Brack was sniggering at him. You wait and see, boy. I'm going to have your house. Then Franklin woke up. No, you won't, you tatty toe cruncher, he said angrily. At school, Franklin asked Josh what he was doing on Saturday. Josh shrugged. Nothing much. Does your big sister still work at the fish shop? asked Franklin. Josh nodded. Good. Listen, I've got a job for you. Franklin cupped his hands over Josh's ear and began whispering his plan. When Josh heard what Franklin wanted, his mouth opened wide enough to swallow a dentist. I can't do that, he cried. I'll get into trouble. You have to. It's my only chance, Franklin begged. In the end, Josh nodded. He wasn't happy, but he agreed to do what Franklin wanted. Chapter 3. Something Fishy On Saturday morning, Franklin's mum was in a flat. Something smells horrible and I don't know what it is, she said. She looked around in a panic. Your dad's outside checking the drains, Franklin smiled. He knew what that smell was. Mr and Mrs Gates were still outside when Mr Bragg rang the doorbell. Franklin let him in the house. Mr Bragg stopped and sniffed the air. Ugh, what's that disgusting smell, he asked. It's Saturday. The factory does fish pie on Saturdays, Franklin said. Mr Bragg frowned. Isn't the factory shut on Saturdays? No, fish every Saturday. That's why we call this Stinky Street. Do you want to see my bedroom? Upstairs, Franklin opened his bedroom door. Mr Bragg pointed to the huge dark patch on the wall. What's that? he asked. Damp, Franklin said. Mum made me cover it with a poster last time. Mmm, Mr Bragg snorted. Mind the mouse poo, Franklin grinned, pointing to a pile of brown lumps. It gets stuck in the carpet. Ugh! Mr Bragg pulled a face. That's nothing, smiled Franklin. Wait till you see what the rats do. At that moment, his mum arrived. Hello, she smiled. How's it going? Your son was telling me about the rats, Mr. Brack said icily. Rats? What rats? Oh no, Franklin, Franklin yelled, pointing out the window. What is that? asked Mr. Brack. That's horrible, Josh Barrett's coming. Quick, hide, yelled Franklin. Hide from Josh? Don't be silly, Franklin's mum said. But Franklin ducked behind his curtains. Josh is a lovely boy, Franklin's mum said, amazed. But Josh banged on the front door. He shouted football songs. Even He even burped through the letterbox. Why, you little... Mr. Brad gasped as Josh ran off. Uh, would you like to see the bathroom, Mrs. Gates asked. But Mr. Brad shook his head. You're joking. I'm not staying here another minute. He ran downstairs and out the door. Chapter 4. Mrs. Cox joins in. Mr. and Mrs. Cox were, Mr. and Mrs. Gates were very angry. You'd better explain what's going on, they told Franklin. Uh, well, I... Just then there was a loud banging. It's coming from Mrs. Cox's house. Franklin's mum said, glaring at her son. Fancy getting an old lady mixed up in this. I didn't, Franklin cried. I really didn't. The banging grew louder and louder. Then Zack started barking. Something was very wrong. And Mrs Gates and Franklin dashed into Mrs Cox's house. She was lying by her stairs where she had tripped. Franklin helped his dad lift her carefully onto a chair. Mr. Gates wanted to take her to hospital, but Mrs. Cox wouldn't go. I'm not leaving, Zack, she said, so they rang her son, Eric, and he came to help her. Mrs. Cox was safe, but Franklin knew he was still in big trouble. He ran back home and took the fish out of the back of the radiator. 
Josh's sister had given to him. He vacuumed up the chocolate drops on the carpet in his bedroom. Then he dried the lemonade on the bedroom wall. He said sorry for jo to Josh for getting him in trouble too. At last, he said sorry to his mum and dad. His mum was very upset. We know you love Stanley Street. We all do. But there won't be space for all of us when the twins arrive. His dad said firmly, We have to go. We have, we have got to move up to a bigger house. I know, Franklin said sadly. Weeks passed, but no one came to look at the house. Winter was coming, and Franklin began to feel hopeful. Nobody wanted to move in the winter, did they? But one day, Franklin came home from school to find creepy Mr. Bragg in the kitchen again. He found out about Franklin's tricks and still wanted their house. Those gates have got to move, Mr. Bragg said to himself. I'll get their house cheap, he smiled slyly, and gave Franklin's mum a piece of paper with a price on it. It was a very low price. Let me know tomorrow if I can buy it, Mr. Bragg smirked. Make up your mind, no one else wants it. We'll think about it, Mrs. Gates said, going pale. Do we have to sell to him? Franklin cried as soon as he, he'd he gone. I expect so, said his mum. Franklin was furious. How could this, how could his mum and dad sell to Mr. Bragg? Even the delicious smell of lamb and bananas coming from the pie factory didn't help. I'm going to take Zack for a run, Franklin said. A long run to Scotland. Oh dear, said his mum. Mrs. Cox took ages to answer the door. She was even slower on her feet since her fall. I was coming round to your house, Mrs. Cox beamed. Is your mum in? I've got something to ask her. Yes, said Franklin. He was trying to stop being licked to bits by Zack. Bring him back by tea time, Mrs. Cox called, as he set off with the dog. I will, Franklin said. I was talking to Zack. Mrs. Cox joked. When Franklin came back, Mrs. Cox was just leaving his house. How was Scotland? she joked. Cold, said Franklin crossly. Mrs. Cox laughed, as if he'd cracked the funniest joke ever. You'd better get inside and warm up, then, she told him, grinning. Franklin felt grumpy. I don't know why Mrs. Cox thinks moving house is so funny, he stopped. His mum was dancing around the room with, yes, underpants on her head. What's going on, he asked. Wait and see, she laughed. It was a Christmas time in, it was Christmas time in Stanley Street. There was no for sale sign outside Franklin's house. Instead, there were piles of bricks and cement from the builders. That was a great idea of Mrs. Cox's, Josh said. You brought her house and not both of the, your houses together. So he had one big house, grinned Franklin. Then the old corner shop downstairs was made into a little flat for Mrs. Cox and Zack. Now you get lots of bedrooms upstairs and Mrs. Cox and Zack get a safe place downstairs so everybody's happy except mr bragg franklin grinned he's brought number 40. now that i finished reading go all the way back to the beginning for me and have a go at reading it yourself if you're struggling you can rewind the video and listen to me again or on oxford owl you have the play button where they will read it for you this week on Guided Reading, we have another word search. To access the word search, you need to click the link that I will put in your portfolio. And once you click the link, it will bring you to this page. You need to enter your name and press start. Once that has loaded, you'll need to press start again and find all the words down the side in your word search. Don't forget to send me a picture of your fantastic work. Enjoy and have fun!